On December 1st, 1948, in Adelaide, Australia, a young jockey, Neil Day, was riding his horse on Simleton Beach. It was around 6.30am when he and his riding mate discovered the body of a clean-shaven man wearing a brown suit. Although the person was clearly dead, he was laying on his back against a wall and seemed to be staring at the sky. There was no identification on the body. Thus, officials never identified the man or the cause of death. Then, four months later, they found a clue. It was a piece of paper with the words, Tamam Shud, meaning the end. This is the case of the Summerton Man, also known as the Tamam Shud case. On the night of November 30th, 1948, at least two groups of passers-by saw a man who looked like the dead man the jockeys found the following morning. He had also sat in the same place that the Summerton Man lay. The witnesses said that they did not get a very good look at him, but it was the same man from what they could tell. Passers-by saw him around 7pm. By 7.30 to 8, there was no discernible movement. One witness had said he wondered if the man was alive, but assumed he was drunk evidence found at the scene. The Summerton man wore a nice suit, which pointed to at least a marginal amount of prosperity. An expensive British cigarette not from Australia lay behind his ear. Another half-smoked cigarette of the same brand nestled between his cheek and collar. Interestingly, a pack of those cigarettes placed in the case of a cheaper brand was in his pocket. Additionally, investigators found a few more items in his pockets. A book of matches, a used bus ticket to Glenelg, and an unused train ticket to Henley Beach. All of the tags on the man's clothing were removed, making identification difficult. He was not wearing a hat, and his shoes were reportedly suspiciously clean. Another very mysterious piece of evidence was found much later in a hidden pocket in the man's pants. This piece of evidence was a scrap of paper cut from a book that said, The man should. The back side of the piece of paper was blank, but police traced it to the poetry book, The Rubaiyat by Omar Khayyam. The Missing Book after some searching, police were able to find the very book from whence the Tamamshud words had come. A man had found the book discarded in the back seat of his car, with apparently no explanation as to how it had come to be there. At the back of the book there was a sequence in pencil. Police believed it to be a code, but it has yet to be cracked. The strike-through on the second series makes it look like a list as well. Also found in the back of the book was the phone number of a woman who allegedly lived and worked near the place where the Summerton man turned up. Her identity has been protected and her name given only as Justin. Justin once had a copy of the Rubaiyat and police tracked it to a man she had given it to years before. He still had the book, and it was not unusual in any way. Police dismissed the woman and man as possible witnesses. They also dismissed the book, given the unclear evidence that it had anything to do with the Tamam Shud case.
During the time that the police were investigating the scant view leads, numerous people claimed that the Somerton man was a missing person that they knew of. In every case, police were able to ascertain that the man was not the missing man in question. In some instances, missing people showed up at the police station to show that they were not the Somerton man. The autopsy on the Somerton man showed something quite interesting. There was no evidence of the cause of death. The man was 5'11", with green eyes and blondish red hair. He seemed in excellent health, save for congestion and bleeding in his several organs. He was athletic, possibly a dancer or a runner, but not a labourer, as evidenced by the pristine condition of his hands. The doctor who performed the autopsy said that it looked like a particularly dangerous poison that was extremely difficult to identify in an autopsy. He also said that it could have been a natural death, though he did not find the underlying cause. Either way, there was no way of knowing whether the man was suicidal or not, so even if they had found poison in his system, it did not make it a murder. In the end, no cause of death was determined. Police did suggest that they found his lack of ID to be evidence of a suicide. He had very little money on him and no wallet, which would be a better indication of suicide. But he could just as easily have brought little money with him on a day trip. That idea was squashed when evidence that he was certainly not on a local jaunt came in a month and two weeks after his body was found. The Adelaide train station gave a suitcase to the police that the man had left in the coat room the day before he died. It should be mentioned that the time of death was given as 2am. In the suitcase was a suit jacket, stenciling brush, pants with sand in the cuff, screwdriver, scissors with sharpened points, thread, pyjamas, underwear, dressing gown, shaving utensils, slippers, knife and laundry bag. The only labels on the clothing were the name T. Keane, spelt K-E-A-N-E, but it was spelled K-E-A-N in one instance, and dry cleaning numbers. A thorough investigation turned up no keens in the area with a connection to the case. The jacket, however, led straight to America. British cigarettes and an American jacket made this man look more and more like a murdered James Bond. Unfortunately, they were unable to trace Somerton Bond's jacket to an exact location in the United States. In the end, the Tanamshud case boils down to two things. A ton of evidence that leads nowhere, and a lack of evidence that borders on the suspicious, including the missing clothes tags. Even the place of death is uncertain. And this is because some feel that if the Somerton man had died there, there would be vomit on him and around his body. Everything that came up about this case made it more mysterious. Over 70 years later, and it still does not make sense.